Welcome back to Graph Engine Fundamentals. In our last video, we talked about why Graph Engine matters and how it tackles multi brand complexity, repetitive design rules, and more. Today, we are going to define the core concepts that make this system tick. By the end, you'll know exactly what we mean by graph, node, port, edge, typing, subgraph, and outputs. So, let's dive into it. So, let's start with the basics. What is a graph? A graph is basically a visual blueprint for your design logic. It's where you define how raw inputs like colors, numbers or text get transformed into final tokens you use. Think of it as a collection of nodes and edges that together describe every design decision you're making, step by step. Instead of writing out separate tokens by hand, you visually map out which inputs go where and how they get changed along the way. Nodes are the building blocks of your logics. A node is the most basic unit inside your graph. Each node does one small job. It takes in certain inputs, like a color or a number. It performs an action or decision, for example, adjusting brightness, multiplying a spacing value, and it outputs a result. Think of a node as a mini function that applies a design decision. For example, a node might be generate tints for a color or add eight pixels for spacing. You link multiple nodes to build a chain of decisions that lead to your final design tokens. Ports enable us to connect our nodes. Nodes have ports, which are basically the connection points for data coming in or going out. Some ports are labeled input, others are labeled output. If you want to feed a node's result into another node, you connect the first node's output with the second node's input port. A little detail, ports come in different types. We'll talk about typing soon. Um, you can't connect a color output port directly to a numeric input port. It just wouldn't make sense. Uh, imagine ports like the plugs where you attach cables between audio devices. Uh, if you plug in a guitar, so your color data, into a microphone jack and numeric data, it won't work properly. That's the same with the graph. Edges are the lines that pass data. An edge is a line that links one node's output with another node's input port. It tells the graph engine to take the result of a node A and send it over to node B. When you see lines drawn between nodes, these lines are edges. One edge actually equals one connection. Typically, an edge connects exactly one output port to one input port. And what flows along these edges? That's the actual data, like a hex value for a color or a number for spacing. Typing is there to ensure compatibility. In the graph engine, every piece of data has a type, like color, number, string, or design token. This prevents mix-ups uh, like text logic on a numeric value. So let's look at an example. If a node expects a color input, you can't accidentally feed it a font size number. The system enforces the correct data type at each port. So why does it matter? This makes our design rules more robust. No more confusion about whether zero means zero pixels, or zero as a text label, or false as in boolean. Typing keeps it clear. Subgraphs help us nest logic. A subgraph is like a little graph living inside a bigger one. It's especially handy when you have a chunk of logic you want to reuse or keep neatly grouped. You can have a subgraph called generate brand colors that automatically creates a range of tints and checks contrast for each. Then in our main graph, this subgraph appears as a single node, keeping your top level layout clean. They also allow repeatable actions. Sometimes you'll process arrays, lists of data. A subgraph can define how to handle each item in that array. For instance, applying the same color logic to multiple brand colors at once. So how do we turn these logics into tokens? Ultimately, you need to turn these node connections into real design tokens, like color brand primary or spacing medium. That's where the output comes in. An output is a node that marks the final data, that is then read by Studio. The system writes that value into a design tokens, so you can use it in Figma or code. A little tip, you also have preview nodes. These nodes let you visualize the outcome of a decision like a color palette, a typography sheet, um, they can be really helpful to visualize, check what you actually have been doing. So let's review these key terms in plain English. A graph, a whole map 
of your design logic. A node, a mini action or decision that transforms inputs into outputs. A port, the in and out points on each node where data flows. An edge, the line connecting two ports, carrying data from one node to the next. Typing ensures each port expects the correct data type, color, number, text, token. A subgraph, a smaller nested graph you can reuse or keep separately for clarity. And output, the final tokens you generate, which become part of your design system. That's the whole idea in a nutshell. Once you grasp these basics, reading or building a graph becomes way more intuitive. In the next video, we'll take these concepts and see how they show up in the actual graph engine interface. We'll explore how to add nodes and connect edges. Then we'll do a simple example, like generating a color scale and hooking it up to real tokens. If you're feeling a little uncertain, don't worry, this was the theoretical foundation. Once you see it in action, everything will click. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in part 3 for the interface tour. Bye!